All right, everybody, here's a short tutorial on creating a Jibo Wavemaker control cable to hook up to an Apex Reef Keeper or Reef Angel Reef Controller with a 0 to 10 volt output. You're going to need your old Jibo controller, a small piece of printed circuit board, a 25 volt 10 UF capacitor and two 10k ohm resistors. Next we have our basic circuit here. We're gonna go over. You have your 24 volts positive input, 24 volts negative input, your 0 to 10 volt negative input from your controller, your 0 to 10 volt positive output from your controller, and over here you're going to have 24 volts out to the Jibo, 5 volts out, 0 to 5 volts out to the, to the pump, and 24 volts negative out to the pump. The basic configuration is you're going to pass your 10 volt positive through one of your 10k ohm resistors with a second resistor going to your 10 volt negative which will split the voltage. You're going to add a capacitor to handle any surge spike and pass that to the output and you're going to directly cross with your 24 volts here. Anything in blue is a ground, anything in red here is a positive. All right, so I'm gonna shut this off and do some setup and I'll be back. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is disassemble the current controller. All right, we're back now after going to get a screwdriver that actually works. So we're gonna take the back cover off of this and uh, we're going to use some of the components from in here to uh, build the new wiring harness. Uh, you can buy them new, but I don't ever intend to use this controller again now that I have it on my reef controller, so um, I'm just going to reuse what I have. going on in here. This is our uh, output that goes to the Wait one second here just to do some camera adjustment. So you have the blue, brown, and yellow wires that go out to the to the pump on the three-pin locking connector. Um, the blue is 24 volts negative, brown is 24 volts positive, and the yellow is your zero to five volt control. Um, which, if you recall, the uh, diagram that I posted before and then here you have the input connector which we're going to reuse um, and the uh, wires are actually reversed on this one on the first couple I've done the brown and the blue have been lined up so I'm going to actually have to check the polarity here and ensure that uh, they have the uh, 24 volts positive on the 24 volt positive pin and you'll want to do the same but essentially just making sure that these wires here if it's brown to blue and blue to brown 
that they line up the same way um, when you uh, when you do your uh, connections on the board um, and uh, I will verify that that brown wire is the uh, outside ground pin on this connector that won't be too hard um, the capacitor that I'm using um, is actually salvage that's this one here uh, I don't even know if you can see that here in the image is right here um, this is a 25 uh, 25 volt 10 UF and uh, I actually took this one off of my first controller and it's this resistor here so if you don't want to buy one at the store uh, you can salvage the one off the board and that's what I'm going to use for the purposes of this demo um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut these five wires off the board and discard this uh, head unit because we're not going to need that I do leave always leave enough on these wires if I ever did have to put this back together I can So, here's my, uh, here's my parts, um, and you can actually, if you wanted to, um, do this without the circuit board portion. Uh, I'm going to do it because it makes, makes a much nicer finished looking product, but you could theoretically just attach your resistors here and solder them right onto the wires along with the capacitors. Um, that's not going to be the method I'm going to use for this. Um, but if you didn't have a PCB, uh, you know, board, you could do that, um, and it would work just as well. And I shut the camera off, um, and I'm going to do some drawing on the circuit board, and then I'll be back. All right, here's the circuit board as it's been drawn up with uh, just a regular old sharpie. Um, you could get more fancy and do computer printouts, but I'm trying to keep this simple here. Um, so now I'm going to etch it, and you can do that by a number of methods. Um, I'm going to use muriatic acid and hydrogen peroxide uh, mixture. Um, you can just use ferric chloride, which is available um, anywhere that sells printed circuit boards. Um, so, uh, and, um, so I'm going to etch this, and I'll be back. All right, everybody, we're back. Um, I etched it. I drilled it with a 1 16th drill bit. And um, now I'm going to start assembling. I'm going to start with the power input. I have verified on this that the brown is negative. Um, so I'm going to strip a little bit off, heat up a soldering iron, and um, solder some points here. Alright, first I've attached the power input. Um, wait for my soldering iron just about up to temperature here.
All right, there's our positive, clean the tip. And we're gonna do the output wires here. Now in my case, now uh, my blue and my brown switch. Um, that may or may not be the case with yours. Uh, make sure you follow what is, uh, however it's assembled on your existing board. And uh, that'll make sure you get it right. And the yellow wire is your control out on all of the ones that I've seen so far. So we're going to take blue. Now, if I'd have had a 564 drill bit, I would have drilled these component holes a little bit larger uh, on just these input and output wires. It makes it a little easier to uh, assemble, but the 564 was missing out of my kit, so I used the 116th. Sorry, I can't uh, solder this and let you see it at the same time, but uh, soldering basics are really not part of this tutorial, and I wouldn't be the one to teach you anyway. All right, so our input and our outputs are wired up here. Now it's time to add a couple of components. I'm going to start with the two resistors. I'm going to have a little bit of a problem with this capacitor um, because I'm not using a new one and so uh, that's going to cause me some issues but we'll get through it. Again, I'm just soldering the components into their places and you can see where they belong on the schematic so actually viewing what I'm doing here isn't really all that important. And I'll take some photos of the finished product um, when I'm done if you have any questions about that part.
And then you can clip the excess off the resistors, of course, so that they don't stick out like that. And uh, that's my back side so far, and that's our front side. Next thing we're going to add is the capacitor. Like I said, I'm probably going to have a little bit of trouble with this. Make sure you get the uh, capacitor in the right orientation as far as uh, positive and negative. The stripe on the capacitor will go to negative. I am definitely going to have a little bit of problem with this, but we'll get through it here. I have to use a pair of tweezers to hold it in the hole. Well, I can solder it. I'm going to solder this off camera because it's going to take a minute. Alright, there's the uh, circuit. Now, um, this is essentially complete at this point. Um, the two holes that remain open are where you would attach uh, the wire that would go to your particular controller be it an apex uh, reef angel reef keeper um, I personally have a reef angel so I simply need a uh, black and red wire off there that go to some screw terminals uh, if you have an apex they'll go to a cat 5 jack um, and if you a cat 5 RJ 45 jack and if you have a um, reef keeper, uh, I, I really don't know what to tell you as far as exactly what the connector is, uh, but I know you do have a 0 to 10 volt port. So you would just have to connect the 0 to 10 volt wires, positive and negative, to those, uh, with the negative being the more one towards the center, um, which is junctioned with this brown wire on this diagram uh, that is the ground on the 24 volt side. Uh, and that's all there is to uh, Jibo controller cable. Um, one last note, I've gone ahead and added uh, the black and red wire that I need for the Reef Angel, but uh, I'm also going to wrap this in some um, electrical tape um, to uh, keep it protected. Um, I actually use a silicone, silicone uh, self-adhesive tape uh, that only adheres to itself makes a watertight seal um, but regular old electrical tape will be fine for the majority of applications